All right. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on this Motion Composite sponsored educational event. We are so happy you've uh, joined us today to learn more about the Helio, one of our favorite folding chairs here from Motion Composites. Our hosts for today are Maz Mukayas. He's an ATP and a rep for Motion Composites. And also we have Christy Hamstra. She's a PT and an ATP and one of our clinical educators here as well. Um, so um, if you guys have any questions during the presentation, we do have a questions box, a chat box. They're both on the control panel on the right side of your screen if you're on a desktop. We also have handouts if you need those, also in the control panel on the side. They're all drop down menus. So if you need a PDF of the presentation, that's where you're going to download it. Um, and if you'd like to see the Helio brochure, that's there as well. And if you have any of those questions, I'll be manning the question box. If we've got some really good discussion questions, I'll interrupt and have these guys answer directly. And everything else we'll save to the end. Um, and don't worry, you're going to be on mute the entire time and your webcam will be off. So no worries there. If you have a question, just use that box there. So again, Maz and Christy, um, they're going to be your hosts today. Excellent, thanks, Olivia. So real quick, uh, thanks for the um, thanks for joining us. My name is Christy. I'm a physical therapist and an ATP, and I'm one of the clinical educators for Motion Composites. And I live in the Michigan, in Detroit, Michigan. So I'm going to turn my camera off, and Maz is going to be our star here. Hi guys, my name is Maz. I'm the uh, territory manager for the Mountain States, which consists of Colorado. Utah, Wyoming, Nebraska, New Mexico, and Arizona. Um, I've been an ATP for uh, eight years and I've been in the complex rehab industry for uh, about 12 years now, so. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we're gonna get started here. So everyone I'm hoping can see my PowerPoint and we're just gonna get started. So we're gonna do a motion minute introduction to Helio and our symmetrical cross brace. So it's pretty, pretty fun. Want to do a quick welcome from Motion Composites. So David and Eric are the founders of Motion Composites and uh, very much welcoming you to this education seminar and uh, going from there. Sorry, is this advancing? Um, and I think that we all Sorry, share this real quick. Let's make sure that we are on presentation mode and that we're sharing the PowerPoint presentation. Right now we just see your, sorry. Um, where's your screen? Perfect. Going? Okay, sorry about that. So again, welcome from Motion Composites. And I think that anyone that's on this seminar today uh, subscribes to the same as our mission statement, which is to lead the evolution of mobility for better living for all of us, for, for our clients, for everyone that's been involved in this industry. So the history of motion composites, if you're new and you uh, haven't, haven't heard it, it's actually a really amazing story and there's a lot of uh, fun stuff here. So located in uh, Saint-Roch in Quebec, Canada. So I always um, mess up the rest of the part of the name, but motion composites launched in 2008 after Eric and David did a university project in 2005. It really is an incredible story of how they brought their first uh, folding carbon chairs to market. So again, things that people said never could happen, they made happen. Uh, in 2016, we launched the Carbon Apex, a rigid, fully adjustable frame, and uh, it's an incredible rigid chair as well. We distribute manual wheelchairs, ultralight manual wheelchairs in over 30 countries. So that's pretty exciting as well and many, many industry accolades along the way, which we're gonna show you here in just a second. So again, uh, welcome from Motion Composites, welcome from Eric and David, and we're gonna go through uh, our Helio and Symmetrical Cross Brace. So the first poll question here is really just to see again, who do we have on the line very quick, not gonna take a whole lot of time here, so. Perfect, so who is in class today? just to see. And again, don't worry if, if you can't vote, it really isn't a big deal. Awesome, we have a lot of therapists and a lot of ATPs and dealers, perfect. And other, thank you for the other. Excellent, 
I love to be able to talk about product with, with therapists. So perfect. All right, so again, a couple of the industry awards. So the Helio um, has won the Harding Award multiple times, the Helio C1 and the C2. So this is an award that's uh, put out at the Canadian Seating and Mobility Conference. And then another industry recognition for our Apex, which is our rigid share. Uh, also won a Harding Award, won some new HME awards and the red dot. So again, understanding that we do make world-class and uh, industry recognized chairs. I would like to note, you know, that red dot award, that red dot award is, is not wheelchair specific. That is an award that's given for uh, engineering feats. And then uh, that, that speaks a lot to kind of what we're going to be talking about today is the level of uh, engineering uh, that we've put into our chairs. Perfect. Yes. Thank you, Maz. All right. So um, all of our features. So we're going to talk, we're going to talk about our folding wheelchairs today. So all of the chairs have the same features that are proprietary to our folding chairs. So whether you are talking about our C2, our carbon uh, chair and our carbon HD chair or the A7 and the A7 HD, and you're gonna understand what these, what these names mean shortly, the A6 and the A6 HD, and even our Veloce and our Veloce HD. We're not going to be 100% discussing the Veloce today, but we just wanted to mention it because the core uh, technology is there for it as well. All right, poll question number two. Don't worry, this is our last poll question until the end of the, the session. What we really just wanna know, what is your experience with Helio, any model? Have you ever even heard of a Helio? Have you seen a prescribed one? All right, all right. All right, so we've got some people who know the Helio. That's awesome. So feel free to uh, type some stuff in there. All right, have heard of Helio, what's a Helio? And quite a few who have seen the chair but never ordered. Well, we're hoping that after this today, you're gonna feel confident to um, talk to your supplier or uh, talk to your rep, and we're gonna go from there. So real quick, Helio engineering. So we're gonna talk about a hybrid frame. What does that even mean when we're talking about a hybrid or when we're talking about our wheelchair frame? One piece side frames. Why do we care about that? Symmetrical cross brace, very important. Oversized axle bolts, locking seat saddles, and a couple of other things. So Maz is gonna take this away here. Um, I'm going to try to minimize this. If you are on a phone, you should be able to swipe is it not letting me do this? There we go. So I'm gonna stop showing so that we just see Maz because he's gonna go through um, engineering of the naked frame. So I'm gonna spend a couple minutes, guys, just kind of going through um, our Helio, our naked frame. Um, this is what we call our naked frame. Uh, so, you know, when you think of a folding wheelchair, it really consists of three parts, uh, two side frames and a X brace or a folding uh, mechanism in the center. So um, we've got a lot of uh, core technologies and unique proprietary designs built into our chair that make it very unique um, that is built across all of the Helio line, whether you're talking about an A6, A7, or C2, which we'll get into those details in a little bit. Um, the first thing that I like to talk about when we talk about the Helio is our one piece side frame. So if you see the green side frame here, um, it is one solid rectangular, although it's hybrid, rectangular piece. Um, and so why is that important? Um, we don't have, we don't ever cut the frame. We don't ever have to uh, attach uh, pieces to the frame to, to, to build the side frame. Because it's a one solid piece, it creates more rigidity, more stability. We're able to save weight in the frame and it creates a more, um, a more solid platform for the sides of our chair. So um, our, our one piece side frame is unique to us and uh, it is, on again, all three of our, our Helio models, uh, the A6, A7, and C2. Um, you know, another another key differentiator that, that makes us significantly different is our uh, symmetrical and elliptical cross frame. So I'm gonna fold this up and you can kind of see, we've got that, uh, that elliptical shape in the, uh, in the cross frame in the center there. But one of the things that I like to point out when I talk about our cross frame, if you take a look at the bottom part here, the center of where the cross frame uh, meets the, the side frame, and you take a look at the top of the seat rail right here where, where the, the, 
cross frame meets the seat rail, you could draw a direct line through that center point and you can see that the, 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 those points are right on top of one another. Why does that matter? What does that mean? When you unfold the chair, if you have those points directly on top of one another, it allows for even weight distribution. Even weight distribution allows for a chair that has less torsion, less ability to flex and move around. Um, we have about 12 different patents on, that, on this side, uh, on, on this uh, folding mechanism. Uh, and that's just in the folding mechanism itself, which is what is very unique about us. You see other manufacturers that try to mimic things like this by putting, you know, four or, or three different um, uh, rods across their, their folding mechanism. We're able to do it without adding extra moving parts, without adding a lot of weight uh, by having these elliptical and symmetrical um, cross uh, cross frame pieces so the other the other piece that is vastly different and you'll see a picture of this later i'm actually going to hold a quarter up for reference and uh, i kind of highlighted this in silver but if you take a look that's a quarter that's the center of our uh cross brace center shaft or the bolt that goes through our cross frame look at the size of that thing so it's actually four inches long so if you look at this length here that's four inches long and it's about two and a half times the diameter of a traditional bolt that holds a, a cross frame together. So I challenge any of you to go and find a folding chair, uh, whether it's in your clinic, in your showroom, in your warehouse, and go take a look at the bolts that they use to hold together that cross frame. It's typically a threaded bolt all the way through, um, and it's it's certainly not four inches long, nor is it that diameter that we use in our in our uh, mechanism. Um, this is actually pressure fit into place. And when you see the picture of it later uh, in one of the uh, later slides that we have, you'll see how thick it actually is. Um, it's not something that can just easily be pu pulled in and put and put out. We actually use a special tool in our factory, pressure fit it into place, and then we we put a bolt at the end of it to to lock it into place. So. Um, that's important because that also helps to distribute the weight evenly across the center of that cross frame, which helps to prevent any of that torsion. So you don't get any of that twist um, in the frame side to side. Not unique to us, but something that I always point out because it is very important. We realize that when you unfold a folding chair, uh, it, we don't wanna sit on top of the side rails. We wanna sit in between the side rails. And so if you look at our seat rails, they actually sit in between our, our side rails. Um, in conjunction with that, we have these lovely saddles at the front, which allow our seat rails to click into place. You actually hear an audible click and that ties everything together. So when you take a look at the, that, that, the, the cross bolt, the bolt that we've got holding our cross frame together, the one piece side frame, the saddles sitting in between the rails, we really create a very rigid box and something that doesn't twist, doesn't have a lot of torsion and performs much more like a rigid frame chair rather than a folding frame chair. Awesome, thanks Maz. I have a question about the cross brace that he showed. Um, so you showed that the cross brace starts and ends in the same plane. What does it look like on a competitor's chair? Would it also do that or how would it present and what would be the result? Yeah, so um, if you can still kind of see my video, but when you think of a, a, a normal cross brace, what they traditionally do is take a round tube and a round tube, and then they'll put a, a spacer or, or um, uh, a cove washer in between the two of them. And so when they unfold, if you look at my knuckles here, when they unfold, usually where the weld point at the top, um, they're not right on top of one another. So typically those lines are, are not, uh, the, the weight distribution is not lined up directly on top of each other because of the way it unfolds. So what I've seen some manufacturers do is that in order to get that weight distribution a little bit more even, they'll take another bar and they'll put it on the other side so that now they've got some more weight distribution evenly centered. So they've got kind of a weld point here and a weld point here when it unfolds. And so um, it all depends on the manufacturer. Everybody does it a little bit differently. Um, what's unique about us is that we're able to do it without adding any extra parts, pieces, components because of that elliptical shape that we have um, in that side frame. And again, we've got some lovely patents that uh, make sure that nobody else can kind of mimic that design. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, so if, again, if you have never touched one of these chairs and looked at one of these chairs, you need to reach out to your local sales rep. And Olivia is going to put in the chat box at some point how you can uh, contact your local rep. So Maz did a really good job. We're going to break down a couple things and then we're going to go back and forth. So if you're on your phone, if you swipe 
uh, to the right or the left, you might be able to go between. So when I say Maz, can you show this? And you want to see Maz, you can swipe. So hybrid frame, what does this mean and why, why is this clinically important? Well, it means that we're able to get all seat to floor heights within one frame. So we don't have to have a hemi height. If you have that client who really needs that low seat to floor height for foot, for foot propelling, um, 12 inches, we can go all the way down to. So if you really need someone in a super low frame, this is gonna be one of the lowest that you're gonna find. But again, you can use the same frame if that client then decides later on or, or is not any longer capable of doing foot propelling and they need to be up. So all we would do is uh, change out caster, caster size, maybe fork size, maybe stem bolt size, all of this in one frame. So it allows for change, which clinically is, is very important, but also could mean that you might wanna consider this to be a fleet chair in your rehab facilities, because again, you could get a lot of different height adjustments with very minimal changes in part, and uh, actually very easy to, to use the parts to, tech, to use the tech technically wise. So, Super important. Yeah, go for it. Great, great point, Christy, because when we do have that one piece side frame, that means that all one piece side frames are the same for every chair. Obviously, the length is different depending on seat depth, but you're able to achieve a 12 inch seat to floor height up to a 21 and a half inch seat to floor height, depending on the model, all with the same side frame. I know that with a lot of other manufacturers, you typically would have to change your frame out in order to get those seat to floor height uh, adjustments. We only have to change out the fork, caster size, and potentially the rear wheel if you need to change the rear, rear seat to floor height. Yep, excellent point. So again, if you want this for a fleet chair, it might be a little bit easier to make some of those changes and you, you don't have to stock as many parts, so, which is very good. So let's again go back to one piece side frame. So Matt did a really good job and that green really pops, which is great. So we're eliminating the need for extra hardware. So when you see other manufacturers, and that's what we've pulled here is just an example of um, a regular chair that has a, a front piece, a rear piece, and then it's bolted together on the cross brace. So that can cause um, additional movement. There's parts that come loose. How many times have you delivered a chair and you're, you're already losing two or three, two or three bolts? So again, with the one piece side frame using the, the clamping system that we use, we're gonna uh, eliminate some of that issue. It's very lightweight and it's easy to switch out the cross brace. So Maz, if you wanted to show really quick the, the two points where you would need to, uh, to loosen to change out the cross brace. So basically these two here and these two here, and then you just remove the clips that hold the side frame. Let's see if I can show this easily, the side frame into the cross frame. And once you remove those, the entire cross frame comes out, new cross frame comes in, and it's basically just four bolts. Awesome, and I can tell you from experience doing it myself, it is actually quite easy. So when you're, when you're dealing with the adult population, most of the time you're, you're growing it in width. So if someone goes uh, from <clears throat> meeting an 18 inch wide to a 20 inch wide, all you have to do is order the, the additional part and switch that out. So very, very simple. All right, one piece side frame. Now we're gonna head off into the symmetrical cross brace. All right, so again, you can see from this picture here, the top to the bottom, they line up perfectly. It's an ultra rigid folding system. Um, everything aligns, it, it lines up beautifully. So what, what is the clinical significance? We're decreasing the torsion in the frame. So we really don't want for there to be a lot of wiggle. We want the everything to be tight where it needs to be tight. We only want to have motion where we need motion, okay? And this is one of the, the, the founders of the company. They really wanted their chairs to roll, but they don't want them to shake or rattle. So really we want our chairs to roll. We don't want any shaking or rattling. We do not want to hear parts and we don't want that torsion. We all know that when you are pushing some of those um, hospital chairs down the, down the, down the hallway and you put your hands up on the on the handles and you push it and it's going like this. So you're you're getting torsion in, in a folding frame. When you do this to our chairs because of the way that they're engineered, it's gonna be a stiffer fit, which is super important. Um, the other thing that we wanted to bring up is this here is in carbon, right? So we didn't discuss how can you get this amazing, amazing elliptical shape in aluminum. Maz, can you explain how we can get that in aluminum? Yeah. Happily. So, um, and, and we'll, we'll discuss it a little bit more when we talk about some of the heavy duty options later as well. But um, obviously with carbon, it's molded in carbon. 
Um, we wanted to make sure that we kept the integrity of the aluminum uh, intact so that it, it, it maintained its strength. Um, and so we don't we didn't want to use heat to, to mold shape or change the aluminum on the cross frame. Um, so what we do is hydro mold it, which means we put it into a mold. We put the aluminum, uh, the aluminum piece into a mold and we fire water through it thousands of miles an hour um, over a period of time. And it actually molds the aluminum into that shape. It allows us to control the thickness of the wall of that cross frame. And we're able to get that shape out of aluminum for both the A6 and the A7. So in, in a carbon version, it's molded into that shape. And in an aluminum version, we hydro mold that so that we don't weaken the integrity of the frame. And you'll understand why that's important when we talk about some of the uh, heavy duty versions later. Awesome. Thanks, Maz. And also, if you go over to the Motion Composites website, we have some really cool um, information there as well, if you want to learn a little bit more about that. So continuing on. So here are those photos that Maz was talking about. So right in the middle, you can see that long axle bolt next to a quarter. You can see how long it is. You can see how thick it is. So this is really what makes up that ultra rigid uh, folding system. And again, you only have enough motion that you need. You don't want to have additional additional movement. So if you think again about a cross brace, right? And so when you when you have a traditional cross brace and your your client is is in that chair all of their weight is going right down to that pressure point right there, right? So again, we want it to be oversized. We want it to be strong. We want it to have really, really good integrity so that when the client is there, you're getting, you're getting what it needs to be. So we don't want, good, we don't want that. Um, we don't want torsion. We don't want movement. We don't want excessive movement. We only want as much as we want. And you can hear it click into the seat saddle. So again, you hear that audible click so you know that your chair is um, engaged, the ultra rigid folding system is engaged and your chair is gonna be ready to roll and it's gonna perform um, with more rigidity than, than a standard folding chair. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit through uh, C2 and A7 highlights. So again, our carbon fiber uh, Helio C2 and our aluminum A7, basically they are the exact same chair other than the material that they're made out of. So if you have your client who you want to put in this chair and they absolutely can't, can't find funding for carbon, then the A7 is a really, really good um, second choice here. So we're gonna go through some of the features that are available on this, and then we're gonna break it down. All right, infinite caster adjustability. So, hey, Christy, yeah. really yeah. quick. Yes. There's a question about why is it that movement and torsion, what's the benefit of having less movement and torsion in the frame? What does it do for the user? Oh, this is a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, so let's think about movement and torsion, okay? So if you are uh, propelling your chair, then you're propelling it and you're, you're wanting it to go forward. If there is a lot of movement in your chair, then the, per, the propulsion that you're putting and the energy that the user is putting into the chair is getting lost into the frame and that movement is taking away the efficiency. So the, mo the less movement you have in your frame, the more rigid, the, the more um, your, the energy that you, the user, are putting into the chair, the chair is going to go farther forward and you're not going to lose energy into the frame. I, I like to think... Sense. I like to think about you know physics, right? Um, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. And so if your energy is being transferred into a flex in the frame, rather than the rotation of your tires or your rear wheel, then you're losing energy, losing propulsion efficiency. And over time, that's going to weaken the integrity of your upper extremities. It's going to make pushing the chair harder. Um, and it's going to... Uh, allow the chair to fall apart faster as well because you're 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 having so much energy go into the chair as opposed to go into the actual rollability of the chair beautiful beautiful i like set. to use the example of like a grocery cart for those of us yeah. that aren't wheelchair users you know when you get that bad cart and you're fighting it the whole way and you feel one wheel is maybe a little more responsive to bumps and things on the ground and you, you're just fighting it and you waste a lot of energy just trying to finish your shopping trip right so for our wheelchair users, anywhere that we have things just not moving efficiently um, and we're wasting energy to control it or our bodies are absorbing those vibrations and those forces, that's going to lead to fatigue and possible injury. Um, so with that cross brace, what I really love about it, because it's all in one plane, 
it's not one bar in front of the other. Uh, let me see. Okay, there we go. So instead of that, like you showed us wonderfully here with our arms, most wheelchairs, you're going to have one bar in front of the other. When you think about those forces coming up through the chair, it's actually going to create almost like a little tornado. That's what that torsion we're talking about is. So as those forces are coming up from the ground, it really creates this wobbling motion under your chair. So it's like that really bad shopping cart. Here where he's showing you on the cross brace, it's all within one plane. So even if those forces are coming up through the chair, it's further rigidizing the frame. Rigidizing is just making it like one solid box, okay? That's why our folders feel like rigid chairs. And that's the reason anytime a wheelchair user transfers into our chair at a trade show, instantly that first push, they're like, whoa, you can see it in their face. Yes, we want a light chair. Yes, we want these really sharp designs and features, but it's that, it's how efficiently designed the chair is that a longtime wheelchair user notices it instantly. You don't even have to be on smooth floors. We've had them on a rug and they've noticed right away. So that to me is the biggest thing about this, uh, this chair for the wheelchair user. It's that minimizing the wasted energy and like you said, possible injury over time because all those forces coming up through the chair, they're canceling out, further locking out that box. That's what it's all about, so. Perfect. Excellent. Thanks, Excellent. All right. So continuing with that, Olivia totally stole my thunder with her shopping oh. cart. I was going to use it later. It's totally <laughs> fine. I love it. It's perfect. So infinite caster adjustability. So again, if your casters are not squared out to the ground, if they're not where they need to be, you're going to you're going to be fighting your frame. You're going to have flutter. You're going to have all sorts of in, in, inefficiencies in your chair. So Something that's very unique to motion composites are how we have our uh, casters casters put in. So always able to achieve 90 degrees to the ground. Mask can show uh, it fits into the hole into the frame, which is that little uh, hole right there. This little torque arm, when you see this here, um, this little torque arm right here is uh, very unique. Maz, can you talk to us about this torque arm? Yeah, so so you can see in both of the pictures um, that that torque arm, and so uh, I, I'm a big physics nut, so I, I like I like the the concept that if if the front caster is going to take an impact, that force, that energy that it's taking has to go somewhere. And so while some chairs, including including our A6, has an eccentric bolt design where there's two bolts holding that that uh, caster in place, if energy is taken into the front of that caster, it's going to go into those bolts. What we've done with the A7 and the and the and the C2 is created this torque arm to absorb some of that impact, and it's a one inch wide clamp that clamps onto our inch and a quarter tubing um, with a precision size clamp, so that once it's tightened down, that thing's not going anywhere. So once you square your front caster and tighten this sucker down, it's first of all very easy to adjust, and then second of all, it's not going to move. So your caster will always stay in true. How confident are we that it'll stay in true? If you take a look at the picture on the left, it has our transit tie down option on there. All of our crash testing was done with that transit tie down option. And in order for us to pass that, those crash tests, that means that that caster had to stay put when it went through all of the uh, all the crash testing that we simulated. That is what it, that that uh, D loop is actually attached to that front caster journal. So that's how confident we are that that caster will stay in place once it's once it's adjusted in place. Awesome. Thanks, Maz. And I just want to again bring bring to your attention. So because we have the hybrid frame, we get all of our seat to floor height uh, through rear wheels and through different caster size and stem bolts. So you can see this one here on the left has a two inch stem bolt and the one on the right has a one inch stem bolt. And we have that picture later on to show you again. So another thing that we have is anti flutter caster housing. So very easily to prevent the caster flutter. Again, if you want to make sure your chair is dialed in, this is not the first thing that you're going to be adjusting, but know that it's there to make those fine tune adjustments. You want to make sure your center of gravity is set up. You want to make sure that your chair is set up, uh, that your casters are, are square to the ground and you're not having toe in, toe out, but it is very easy to adjust and it's there as a, as a feature as well. So if you're having that sharpening card issue, we want to make sure that you have the ability to make those fine tune adjustments as well. All right, our vertical axle plate. And Matt can show a little bit here as well. So very, very easy to adjust. Again, um, techs love working on this chair. 
a couple months ago before the COVID uh, crisis shut everything down, I was in a supplier's, um, the supplier I used to work for and the, the tech, he, he showed me, he goes, hey, Kissy, there's a Helio over there. And I said, oh yeah? He goes, yeah, he goes, those are my favorite chairs to work on. I said, really, can you tell me why? He goes, because they're, uh, you can tell that they're well-constructed, you can tell that they're well-made and everything is so easy the way that it clamps on and he just really liked that. So then the other thing about the vertical axle plate besides uh, just positioning is that it's very easy to look at to make the quarter inch adjustments to seat to floor height, both vertical and horizontal. We use letters, we don't use stickers, everything is laser etched into it so that if you're needing to make those, those adjustments, sometimes the clinicians, we have to make those adjustments when the client comes in because there isn't a tech around. Well, guess what? Instead of having to count holes on one side or the other side, you can just be like, oh, I know, I need to get it at I, and then flip around to the other side and get it at I instead of always having to do that. So Maz is going to show us really quick how to um, put the put the clamp because it's clamped on. You want to make sure that you undo them. So tell us Maz how that works. Yep. So you got you have a couple of the the, the clamps are, are nice and simple to, to put on. Um, once you get them clamped into place and you put the put the axle in the position that you want for your center of gravity, you just put the screws back in. It's as simple as that. There are a couple of uh, sleeve bushings that we put in between here just to uh, increase uh, decrease the tolerance between uh, the axle uh, receiver and the frame. And then we give you these cool little guides. I don't know if you can see them too yep. well in yep. the picture, but these nice cool the little black. guides that see. allow you basically to line up the top and the bottom. And so that way you know that you're you're vertically uh, mounted. So, um, and then I, and then the letters. I, I'm a big fan of the letters because it's just you you know we deal enough with numbers as it is, and so to be able to just say, all right, let's set the right side to K, let's set the left side to K, and uh, you get two uh, letter letters that uh, can match up. Awesome. Thanks. And again, there's no need for any additional extra support with this vertical axle plate. It's strong. It holds up because when you have a horizontal axle plate, you uh, the way that it goes between parts of the frame, sometimes you need a little bit of additional um, additional reinforcement as well. So adjustable seat sling. So a couple of things we want to say about this. It's made from sailcloth. It's stretch resistant. It's moisture resistant. Uh, if it starts to hammock, you can make some make some adjustments to that very easily. Built-in Velcro. Let me tell you, if you are in a clinic, never sit on this without a cushion on the seat. That Velcro will rip your clothes like nobody's business. And when you're measuring, and so Maz is going to show us here a couple things really quick. When you're measuring for a helio for seat width, you want to make sure that you're measuring from outside frame to outside frame. Exactly what he's showing you right there with the measuring tape. Perfect, perfect. And uh, occasionally people will say, "Well, it's too hard. How do I get the um, how do I get the adjustable thing? It's hammocking. What what can I do, Maz? How can I make sure that it's uh, tight?" Yeah, one one tip that uh, that I would recommend if you if you need to tighten the um, the seat sling, um, it's it's a pretty simple adjustment. There's the two bolts that you can, one of them you can see pictured there, and you can see that in the front of my frame there. It's a Phillips screwdriver. That piece comes out on on one side really, if you're just trying to tighten it, the side that velcros. You pull that that out. There's a rod that holds that upholstery in place, uh, the sailcloth in place. You pull that rod out. You tighten the Velcro to where you want it to be, put the rod back in place. And then what I recommend when you go to put the uh, rod and uh, sailcloth upholstery back into the channel, fold the chair up a little bit. That way you've got, you've got a little bit of uh, wiggle room and space so that you can slide it back into place, put the cap back on, and then once you unfold it, uh, it should uh, be nice and tight, and you'll have a nice tight seat upholstery. Obviously my, my, my uh, naked frame here doesn't have seat upholstery on it, but, uh, you can envision what I'm talking about. Awesome, and one of the reasons that we really wanna make sure that it is tight is because it's gonna allow us to have that firm that firm surface. If the, th if, the, uh, if the upholstery starts to hammock, then we have all sorts of issues with poor positioning, um, skin breakdown, all sorts of things like that. So if we can keep it taut, then we can maybe uh, not have to have a uh, seat rigidizer for a- uh, um, Solid seat pan. Uh, Solid seat pan, sorry. Yes, exactly. All right, so moving on. Yay, it's my favorite part. Sorry, it's not. But 
again, we want to talk about some of the attention to detail. And when I first uh, touched a helio chair and I touched the mechanism that this it, that this the uh, release mechanism, I could not believe how easy it was. So the lever can easily be pushed or pulled. You can swing in, swing out and drop in and i think that that is incredible so you can see that maz is very easily able to do that with very little use of hand you don't need finger dexterity you can use your thumb any all of that to engage and disengage which i think is incredibly important when selecting a chair you want to make sure that your client can easily get that in and out without having to work too hard at it and the fact that you can drop it in straight how many times have you been uh, working with a client and they just can't quite get it lined up? Well, guess what? It can be put in any direction. It doesn't always have to be perfectly lined up. So some other really cool features about our footrest is infinite length adjustability, laser etched markings, again, with the alphabet. We love that. And then, Maz, can you explain to us uh, what the channel tube, what, um, what those keyholes are for? Yeah, so we have uh, we have a, a channel tube that's connected to the footrest, and then the footrest tube. Um, so if you take a look at the, and it's, it may may not be very easy to see on the camera, but both of the exterior and interior side of that uh, footrest tube are flat, and so what that allows is no 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 rotation inside of here. Um, I know I've seen with some other chairs that uh, they screw directly into or through that to hold that into place. That creates a lot of wiggle wo and wobble in, in the uh, in the footrest. And so what we've done instead, we've got, if you take a look at those keyholes, um, we manufacture the down tube that, uh, that the footrest tube goes into with a keyhole. That clamp is a precision size clamp that we put on there that once it's tightened down, it basically tightens those keyholes up and will squeeze around that rectangular tube so that it doesn't rotate and cannot come out. It will stay put. Um, the other really cool thing, these are manufactured in one length and then we cut them to size depending on what seat, uh, foot rest length you ask for. Well, if let's say you change the cushion and you end up needing a shorter foot rest length, as long as you've got half of a keyhole showing, we don't mind and we encourage anytime you need to take that clamp off and feel free to cut some of the tubing. If you can cut the tubing off and shorten it by an inch and bring your foot rest up, um, you can accommodate for some of those lower uh, lower leg lengths that you need to accommodate for uh, that come up after the fact because of a cushion change. Excellent, thanks Maz. And again, we're always looking for ways to make sure that we can have adjustability and still maintain integrity. So again, another reason maybe to select an A6 or an A7 as your fleet chair because you can make all of those uh, changes as well. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna differentiate between the A6 to the A7. So we were just talking about features that are uh, proprietary to the A7 and the C2. And then here you're looking at this, it's a very busy slide. Uh, it is in the handouts and it's there really for your information to read because I'm not gonna read to you the slide. We're gonna just go through th uh, three key features uh, that are different between the A6 and the A7. So the and A6 before touching on those differences, I would yeah. just wanna remind everybody, the core technologies that we have, the symmetrical cross brace, the one piece side frame, all the things that we've talked about so far with exception of the different axles and uh, with the different caster journals that we have for the A A7 and the C2, all those core technologies with the symmetrical cross brace and the side frame are available and uh, consistent in the A6 as well. So it's Absolutely. not you're not trading off quality, uh, you're just trading off some minimal adjustability as we're gonna talk about now. Absolutely, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, so you're still getting all of those uh, same core features. And truly the, the difference that you're gonna get here when you look at it, you'll be able to see is, is the, um, the vertical axle plate, it's still there. But instead of having quarter inch adjustability, you're now having half inch adjustability. Instead of having 20 positions vert or vertically, you're having 12 because you can take six, you can invert it. And then again, you've got uh, five different horizontal positions versus four inches of horizontal. So you can do your center of gravity. Um, th those, are the, those are the main features. Again, you're still gonna get a lot of adjustability. You're still gonna get a lot, all of that same uh, core features. If you need a specific seat to floor height, like say you absolutely need a 16 inch seat to floor height, you may not be able to get exactly with the A6 because of the half inch adjustability. So again, that may be a reason that you would uh, then switch up to an, to an A7. So again, understanding that. 
and then the caster housing. So we went through the infinite caster housing uh, that integrates to the frame with the A7. The A6 just basically has a, a eccentric bolts caster housing, which is uh, what most of the competition has as well on their folding frames. So I would differentiate that the one thing that we do uh, maybe differently than uh, some of our competitors, while it is still just your traditional eccentric bolt caster journal, we do Loctite the heck out of everything. Every single nut and bolt that comes out on one of our chairs has blue Loctite on it. So it lessens the likelihood that those front caster journals are going to come loose on an A6. Just want to put that out there. Excellent. And here's another example of a one inch stem bolt and uh, no stem bolt. So again, just showing some of those things. And then the back canes, we were gonna go uh, specifically into the back cane differences. So your Helio A6 is adjusted where it um, attaches into the frame. And then the A7, they actually adjust from the top. And we have a special tool that we use to do that as well that Maz will show you. So if it says something, if you are having difficulty or you have some questions about adjusting the A7 from the top, you can contact your local motion composites rep and they can uh, talk through this with you as well. And we can do a little bit at the end if you have a specific question about that, um, we'll continue, th continue through that. So those are the main three things there. So we just wanted to give you a little teaser. You're gonna be like, are you kidding me? We have four minutes left and now you're gonna bring up HD capacity? Well, that's because we just want you to know that all of the chairs that we've discussed have an HD capacity up to 350, 350 pounds. So you, is your client can go into 20 by 20, 22 by 20, they can uh, get up to that 350 pound weight capacity, which has a reinforced symmetrical cross brace and is, uh, if not the lightest, very close to the lightest weight heavy duty wheelchair in its class, which is the ultra lightweight category or the K5 category. So real quick, we're gonna launch a poll. Last poll question. question. Number three. We're very close to the end, friends. Thanks for, thanks for popping along with us. So how much weight on average is added to a, a folding ultra lightweight chair when upgrading to an HD? Sorry, I took my thing away. All right, Maz, you're gonna take this away, my friend. All right. Poll closed. Wow, six percent said thirty pounds. That's uh, that's that's uh, that's scary. All right, if there was thirty pounds added, I'd be terrified. Um, seven pounds. Forty-four percent of you answered seven pounds. So the forty-four percent of you are about right. Now, obviously, it's an average. It's going to vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. But in our findings, that we found that about seven pounds is what traditionally is added when you go from a standard weight capacity folding frame chair to a heavy duty weight capacity folding frame chair. Uh, one of the unique things about motion composites, if you were to take our A6 or A7, which are our aluminum helio models, and go from a 265 pound standard weight capacity and upgrade them to a 350 pound weight capacity. First of all, if you put them side by side and they were both 18 inch chairs, you wouldn't be able to tell which one was heavy duty and which one was not. We use the exact same cross frame, the symmetrical cross frame. Remember when I talked to you about hydro molding? All we do is thicken the wall, the, the aluminum wall of that, that uh, cross frame so that we're able to uh, uh, increase the weight capacity to 350 pounds. Now here's the magic part. We only add about 0.9 pounds. That's less than one pound to the overall weight of the chair when you go from a standard weight capacity to a heavy duty weight capacity in our aluminum frame chairs. With carbon fiber, it gets even more magical because the same thing, we use the same carbon mold. We add two ounces, two ounces of weight from a, uh, a standard 265 weight capacity to a 350 pound weight capacity, which means I can get you a 22 by 20 inch chair with the footrest, with the wheels, with the armrest, with the anti-tippers, everything on the chair. Uh, total weight would be somewhere between 30 and 35 pounds, which is unheard of because that's what ultra lightweight used to be uh, across the board. Absolutely. So again, a little bit just of a teaser. So if you are really interested or we really kind of piqued your curiosity, please contact your, your rep. So wrapping up here, just some specifications for the Helios. So they're available starting at 14 by 14, up to 22 by 20 with the HD, uh, 265 pound standard weight capacity and 350 pound HD weight capacity. 
And across the three models, you can get seat to floor heights from as low as 12 inches. That's really, really low for your foot propellers, um, all the way up to 21.5 inches, depending on what you select. So clinical points, again, wrap up. We want, we are, we have maximum adjustability that change with the client's needs because not anybody that's gotten a chair uh, today is gonna be exactly the same that they're gonna be five years from now. That hybrid frame, we can dial in the center of gravity and efficiency. We want the chairs to be efficient. We do not want excess movement. We want to utilize that ultra rigid folding system and all the core technologies, including the one piece side frame and symmetrical cross brace are across all, all of them. So we hope that we've piqued your curiosity about the Helio. We do definitely wanna take some questions. Um, stay, on, stay on the line, we'll um, uh, answer anything you want. But we also just wanted to say, if you wanna join us next week for a CEU, uh, Tina is going to do uh, called anatomy of a wheelchair. So we're really looking again at design and materials, but just note that this one is at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So um, just for that, so you can pop on over to our website and check out check out the registration for that, and we will be happy to take any questions right now. Thanks for your time. We really appreciate you guys spending the spending the time with us. If you have any questions, please use the questions box or the chat box and I will read them out for you. Oh yeah, Maz is gonna show us one quick thing though. That's really kind of well, fun. While we're waiting for some questions, I've got an yeah. armrest and I know we didn't spend a lot of time talking about armrests, but one of uh, one of the things that Christy had mentioned earlier on, um, our founders took a lot of pride in having chairs that don't rattle, don't make noise. This is an armrest that's been sitting in my car trailer. Um, it's been used as a demo since I started now. And there's no sound, there's no rattling, there's no playing. It is a very, very robust armrest. It doesn't make any noise when you wiggle and wobble it around. So um, that's just something that I like to point out. And uh, if we were in person, I'd hand it to you and let you shake it yourself, but uh, exactly. you'll just have to trust the camera. <laughs> So we have a question, is a smaller pediatric version coming? Can you talk about maybe the markets and what options are available if you are fitting a so, pediatric client? So currently the smallest we can go is 14. Um, and, and, and kind of our, our guidance and where we're at today, um, while we can work with some of uh, the younger adolescents, um, older pediatrics, um, we're, we're geared to do that. And we are certainly uh, looking in our timeline at coming up with more of a true pediatric product. Um, in the meantime, uh, kind of in a more short term fix, what we're, we're trying to find solutions that we can offer uh, the 14 inch uh, wide with maybe some depth adjustability for you. So um, while yeah. we'll have kind of a, a short fix in place at some point in the near future, um, we don't have a true pediatric product, but we do have uh, something that'll work maybe, you know, for a kiddo's second chair, possibly their third chair. Christy, what would you say on that? And I would say, you know, if, you, if you're really, if you're, if you have to have a folding chair for your client, then maybe you can order in a large, a longer depth and play with some of the, um, aftermarket backs with with adjustable hardware but a lot of it depends on what is your client needing for center of gravity are they doing all of their own self-propelling or are is it going to be somebody pushing them if it's you know a, a client or a pediatric client who is a self-propeller then honestly you probably want to look towards our towards our rigids um, because again it's going to be more efficient and they already are set up with a depth adjustable back for pediatrics I actually and i actually um helped deliver one to a nine-year-old girl on Monday in APEC. So I know it didn't answer your question exactly, but that's kind of kind of where we're at right now. Yes, and Hi I guys. don't know if you mentioned, oh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I would add you guys also, it depends on where you guys are located. So we have different some different chairs in ah, different true. international markets. So in Canada, so outside of the United States, we offer a pediatric version that goes to 12 by 12. It is not approved in the United States at this point. So if you're not, if you're in Canada or another country, there are some options, but it's essentially a shrunk down Helio C2. It's only in carbon. Perfect. Thanks, Tina. My small American mind, I just think, think local. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, friends? 
No, that's about it so far. Um, for those of you that are asking about certificates, there will be a basic attendance certificate that will be auto-generated and emailed out. This is a CEC, not a CEU, so it won't be for a formal continuing education for a license, but you can keep track of your ongoing learning. And we just got a lot of thank yous and well done. Well, thank you all for, for joining. It was fun for Maz and I and Olivia and just to work together. It's fun when we've got Colorado, Texas, Michigan, and uh, Italy all on the same call, uh, putting together some some content. It's pretty cool. We so appreciate you well. taking the time out of your day to join us today. Thank you. Yep. Stay well. Stay safe. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Bye. guys.